Time with anchors Diane Sawyer in New York, Sam Donaldson in Washington, and Chief Correspondent Chris Wallace. Tupac Shakur. His murder in Las Vegas is still a mystery, even as his fame as an actor and recording star grows. In an exclusive interview with Chief Investigative Correspondent Brian Ross, for the first time, his mother takes us back to the final painful moments of her son's life. He fought really gallantly, but that was a little body, and that spirit needed to be released. But her grief soon turned to anger when she tried to settle his affairs. What did you discover he had? I discovered he had next to zero, next to nothing. Millions of dollars unaccounted for. And where are the 200 master tapes of his music? Tonight, new leads in the murder of Tupac Shakur. Tupac Shakur was only 25 when he died from gunshot wounds in a drive-by attack in September. He left behind an artistic legacy that included one platinum and two gold records, as well as five films. The murder is still unsolved, and now even that legacy is in doubt. Tonight, in an exclusive interview with Chief Investigative Correspondent Brian Ross, Tupac Shakur's mother asks for an accounting, not only for his death, but for what she says someone is trying to steal from his life. It's nice out here, man. The American dream, man. The American dream. Thug style. Whatever might have been said about his thug style and rough lyrics, Tupac Shakur's gangster rap music made him a huge star. And at the time of his death, he had every reason to think he had finally made it. Big houses, fancy cars, beautiful women, and lots of money. What does a thug yearn for? Success and to be respected. He absolutely thought he was quite rich and that his family would, you know, be rich for ever. And for Tupac's mother, a Afeni Shakur, who raised her son in poverty, often homeless and at times addicted to drugs, that was a huge accomplishment for the whole family. Please remember that my great-grandmother was a slave, my grandmother was a sharecropper, my mother was a factory worker, and I was a legal worker. Do you understand? And so this, is the, this represents the first time in our life, in our memory, ever that we have been able to enjoy the American dream and that's what Tupac brought to his family. Now we was once two brothers of the same kind. But now five months after her son's murder, with Tupac's music continuing to bring in tens of millions of dollars. And the movie he starred in, Gridlock, getting great reviews. Afeni Shakur says she has made a startling discovery about all the millions her son thought he had earned. I discovered he had next to zero, next to nothing. I discovered that the home that he had thought that he had just bought was not his. In a gangster rap version of an old Hollywood story, Afeni Shakur now wants to know whether her son Tupac was cheated out of his money by a man he had come to trust. This man. Marion Suge Knight, who owns the record company Tupac worked for, Death Row Records. In the last six years, Knight, a six foot three, 330 pound former bodyguard with a violent criminal record and ties to Los Angeles street gangs, has become one of the most powerful and feared men in the music business. If I was so bad, I would have no success. I definitely do not like ugly. We talked with Knight late last year in jail where he was being held for alleged parole violations, which have kept him behind bars ever since. Knight has denied doing anything to cheat Tupac, and he spoke at length about how he helps young black artists survive in the cutthroat music business. I know business. I know how to take my artists and make them superstar status and make them get what they deserve. Afeni Shakur says her son deserved a lot more than he ended up with. I'd say that the, the entertainment business is a, <laughs> a business of <clears throat> prostitution and thievery, and that that was rampant around my son's talent, you know. That something was very wrong was a discovery of Feeney Shakur made as she tried to recover from the shock of her son's murder in Las Vegas last September. An unknown assailant opened fire on Tupac, execution style, as the car he was riding in 
driven by Suge Knight, stopped at this intersection. Tupac lay in a coma for six days. The doctor came out and said that Tupac had stopped breathing three times, and they had revived him three times, and that every time they revived him, he just went back, and I asked him to leave him alone and to let him go. I really felt it was important for Tupac, who fought so hard to have a free spirit. I felt it was important for his spirit to be allowed to be free, you know? And so I rejoiced with him and with the release of his spirit. I rejoiced then and I rejoice now when I'm not crying. Quick to offer her comfort was Suge Knight, who had been with Tupac in the hours before he was shot, holding himself out not only as Tupac's close business associate, but also as his best friend. I miss somebody that I had a lot of love for and I miss him. Suge Knight said to me when my son died that they had an agreement that whoever died first, the other one would certainly take care of their families. Has Suge Knight? No. Suge Knight first signed Tupac to a recording contract when Tupac was in this New York State prison, unable to come up with the million dollars needed for bail, while his lawyers appealed a 1995 conviction for sexual assault. I didn't think he had a choice, and I'm sure he didn't feel like he had a choice under the circumstances. What about this contract? This is the recording contract Tupac signed in prison, which is unusual enough committing Tupac to do three albums for Death Row Records. This is just, it's a joke. Even more unusual, according to Richard Fishbein, the lawyer representing Tupac's estate, was that Tupac agreed to appoint as his lawyer, the longtime lawyer for Suge Knight and Death Row, David Kenner, who says there's no conflict in what he did. You just have to think about the consequences of coming in to have an agreement signed with a lawyer, and the lawyer walks out not only representing this side, but representing both sides. Why they let me go, I don't know, but I'm out. Out on a bail, fresh out of jail, California dreaming. But at first, Tupac was grateful to be free, and his mother says he wasted no time in trying to work off his debt to Suge Knight. He got out of prison on Thursday, and by Thursday night, he was in California in the studio. By Friday, Tupac had complete, completed, completed seven um, songs from that double album. The music hit big with sales in the millions. But Tupac's mother says no one at death row would give Tupac an accounting of his money. He asked over and over and over and over again for accountings of the things that he did, of the, you know, the monies that came in and never got them. And when he screamed loud enough, I'm told, uh, they would, or someone would bring over a car and say, Tupac, here's a Rolls Royce. And he'd drive it around. And then when he died, you found out none of it was his. Tupac's family says in the months before his death, Tupac was fast catching on and preparing to break free of his reliance on death row and its lawyer, his lawyer, David Kenner. A few days before he was killed, he formally sent a letter telling David Kenner that he no longer uh, can represent him and basically firing him. And in fact, Las Vegas homicide detectives took a close look at Tupac's contract and his business relationship with Suge Knight, who detectives say has refused to help the investigation. He obviously is a prime witness in this, also a victim, and we uh, have gotten no cooperation from him. Lieutenant Wayne Peterson of the Las Vegas Police Department says Knight could help break the case, which is now focusing on a brutal fight caught on videotape in a Las Vegas hotel just hours before Tupac was killed. The tape shows members of Tupac's entourage, including Suge Knight and members of the Blood Street Gang, kicking and punching a young Los Angeles man who is a member of the rival Crips Street Gang. He denies it, but police now consider the beating victim and two of his relatives suspects in the case. We believe we know who's responsible for this. The problem we have with this case is we don't have anyone willing to come forward and testify to it. If you knew who killed Tupac, would you tell the police? Absolutely not. I mean, because you know, I don't Why know. Why not? Because it's, 
It's not my job. I don't get paid to solve homicides. I don't get paid to tell on people. The gang, gangster rap mentality that they don't want to talk to the police is definitely hurting this case. Actually, Nor has Knight been willing to talk with Afeni Shakur and her lawyer Richard Fishbein, who went to see Knight right after Tupac's death to settle Tupac's affairs. I kept telling Rick, well, we're just gonna, you know, we'll meet with you. <laughs> She'll take care of everything. Yeah, don't worry, he's gonna tell you everything. We'll meet with him first, you know, but he didn't even show up. And now Tupac's mother says not only is her son's money missing, but more importantly, the master recordings of the some 200 songs he wrote and sang, potentially worth hundreds of millions of dollars. We don't know where the masters are because we can't get an accounting <laughs> from Death Row Records. You don't know where they are? We don't know where they are. Death Row Records and Suge Knight have made hundreds of millions of dollars with gangster rap and stars like Tupac Shakur. In a letter to Prime Time late today, Knight's lawyer, David Kenner, said Death Row had made numerous advances to Tupac and that all of his money had been properly accounted for and paid in a timely manner. When I was young, me and my mama had beat 17 years old. One of the most revealing songs Tupac ever wrote was about his mother, Afeni, and her life as a Black Panther in the 70s when Tupac was born and her struggles raising him amidst poverty and crack cocaine. And even as a crack fiend, mama, you always was a black queen, mama. Given that and the death of her son, Afeni Shakur says no one in Hollywood should try to ignore her or cheat her. I simply feel that I have a responsibility to my son, who I carried in my womb. And that has nothing to do with Shug Knight or anyone. That only has to do with Afeni Shakur and Tupac Amaro Shakur. You all appreciate it. Afeni Shakur is not the only one looking for answers from Death Row Records. Primetime has learned that the FBI and two grand juries are investigating the record company and its head, Suge Knight, looking for links to drug trafficking and money laundering with L.A. street gangs and the New York Mafia. Allegations Suge Knight denies. Mm -hmm. 